Okay, it's about three minutes after two, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, this webinar is for the job seeker. What does the potential recession mean to me? So um, we've got three speakers here today, myself, Chris Chimura. I'm the CEO and Chief Economist at Chimura. I'm joined by Patrick Clapp, who's a senior uh, economic consultant at Chimura. He produces a wide variety of reports for us from labor market studies to site selection to industry customer analysis. He's been with us for about 10 years. And we're joined by Kelsey Stark. Um, Kelsey is a brand strategist for LHH, LHH Recruitment Solutions. It's a global recruitment solutions company and part of the ADECO Group North America. She's been in the staffing industry for over a decade with particular emphasis on healthcare, finance and accounting and supply chain logistics. So um, Patrick and I will be showing you some charts, some job postings data, and Kelsey will be um, here to tell you about the boots on the ground. What is she seeing in the role that she plays um, with LHH? Just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, please ask questions, put them in the chat or in the Q&A, and we'll try to answer as many of them as we can at the end of the presentation. And also, we'll be sending out copies of the slides and a recording for you if you'd like to listen to this again. So just a little bit about Chimura and then LHH before we begin. We provide labor market data and analysis so that you as individuals or communities and businesses can thrive and make good decisions. We were founded in 1998. We have offices in Richmond, Virginia and Cleveland, Ohio. And we're about 50 economists, data scientists, statisticians and business professionals who really care about helping your community and business grow. Um, we're driven by client satisfaction and success. On the consulting side, we often go beyond the statements of work to provide to make sure that you get what you need out of our reports. And we have a software product called Jobs EQ. Uh, we have a roadmap that we're always adding to to um, make Jobs EQ uh, better for you and you, helping you make your decisions. And our top priority is excellence in customer service and data quality. Um, we have a report that we put out on a weekly basis called the economic, weekly economic update. And um, we're welcoming you to um, subscribe to this. It's complimentary, but especially in these times when uh, we have so much change going on in the economy, it's a very brief overview of what came out last week, what's coming out next week in terms of economic numbers, then uh, highlights of the, the um, background information on the uh, data that came out. Um, if there was a Fed speech, because the Fed is so important right now, we'll highlight what that means for interest rates and then some financial information um, toward the end. Kelsey, would you like to tell us a little bit about LHH? Yes, yes, LHH here. We are an end-to-end -end talent solutions brand. And as part of our global organization, we really address needs across really the entire talent journey and help organizations build their capabilities and individuals build brighter futures. LHH as a whole has a bunch of different specialties. I am from our recruitment solutions brand, which you can see featured here on the screen with permanent placement um, as well as interim placement capabilities from the, from the US side, but we of course have a global reach as well. So we're excited to be here with Chimura today. Thank you, Kelsey. So what does the potential recession mean for job seekers? Um, and the bottom line, I think is right here. We are likely on the cusp of shifting from an employee to an employer's market. So what does that mean? In the past couple of years, you as um, job seekers have had a very nice environment where you had a lot of job openings to choose from. Um, many of you have probably moved from one employer to another during this time and probably saw a pretty good increase in wages because um, there is a scarcity of individuals available for many of these jobs. As we go into this recession that we expect, jobs will not be as plentiful. The uptick in wages will likely slow. Um, you'll see in the charts that we will show you in this presentation that not all industries and occupations will be affected in the same way. So a strategy for you would be to add credentials um, to strengthen your resume. And Kelsey will talk a little bit more about how important that is as we um, go through this uh, presentation. And then why do we expect a recession? 
So before we um, get into why we expect a recession, uh, just some background on the Federal Reserve. So the Federal Reserve Board um, is in charge of keeping inflation low, somewhere around 2% because it's best for the economic growth in the economy. And from this chart, you can see that historically we have seen 2% or less inflation. This is on a year over year basis measured by the consumer price index. And the gray line shows you overall goods and services. But when we went into the um, COVID lockdown, prices fell because people weren't out spending. But when we came out of that lockdown and people started to go out and spend, the prices of goods skyrocketed. That's because um, we were all going out buying Pelotons or we were buying sweatpants um, to wear with the nice blouses or shirts or polo shirts that we were wearing um, because you could only see um, the, the top half of us um, on the Zoom calls. Um, but you can see here, as the economy started to open up more and uh, COVID started to die down, the price of services, the cost of services started to go up because we were feeling better about going to restaurants, going to spas or hotels, or even getting on an airplane um, to go on a vacation. So right now, um, the price of goods are coming down. We were at a 40-year high just a few months ago, but still we're looking at goods overall being up around 6% and overall um, CPI above that and services prices still going up. So from that perspective, um, the Fed is raising interest rates to bring um, inflation down. So um, why is inflation not good for the long-term economy? Uh, the first thing is it's a regressive tax. That is for people with a lower income, um, costs them more. They they have less disposable income. So they have to decide, um, do I travel and go on a vacation or do I use that money um, to purchase um, groceries? Um, it distorts decision making. So from this example, if you're building offices and prices are going up for steel 60% in six months, then you may decide to go ahead and buy a, a lot of steel um, enough for the next two years for the offices you're building and keep it in inventory to save money. Well, if we go into a rest recession, then you've got all this steel in inventory that you're going to have to work off before you can um, start to order steel again. So um, it distorts decision making to the degree that it may make recessions deeper. Um, and then it can lead the Fed, um, it could lead to a recession if the Fed continues to raise interest rates. And I'll talk a little more about that in a minute. And um, it can spiral upwards with wages rising and inflation expectations, what the Fed calls is unanchored. So if you're seeing six or seven percent inflation and uh, people that work for you are wanting to see six or seven percent increase in wages, then you're going to either reduce your profits or you're going to pass that price increase along to your consumers. And so that could spiral. You pass the price increase to consumers then we need to pay our employees more and it continues on. Um, therefore, um, the Fed says that expect, inflation expectations are unanchored. So now what is a recession? Uh, here we're going back to 1940 and every one of these gray shaded areas is a recession. And all of the recessions are unique. That is, they're caused by different um, things, but um, what we always see is job losses. You're looking at employment here. So on average, if we go back to 1945, the average employment loss from peak to trough, um, from the beginning of the gray line to the end of the gray line, um, was about 3.9%. Uh, COVID was the worst. It was a 14% decline. Um, and then the smallest decline was back in the 1980s, only 1.1% uh, decline. But to put that into perspective, if we saw the average decline of 3.9% today, we would see about uh, 6 million workers lose their jobs. To also put this into perspective, the average duration or length of a recession is typically about 10 months. So um, at this point in time, we're not looking for a deep recession like we saw during the COVID period, or even a long recession like we saw during the Great Recession when we had the financial crisis. We're expecting a modest, um, short recession. But of course, that depends on 
whether the Fed is able to bring interest rates down um, and how quickly that happens. Um, unfortunately, we don't expect inflation to drop quickly. That is, we don't expect to be back to 2% by the end of this year, um, maybe getting close to it by the end of next year. Um, and so the Fed will continue to raise the federal funds rate. That's the only rate they could directly affect. It's the rate that banks loan to each other for overnight rates. Um, so that rate right now is about 4.5%. And as they raise that rate, then uh, other um, interest rates rise, such as um, the price of uh, auto loans, uh, home mortgages, um, purchasing of loans from a business perspective. And so it becomes more expensive to buy those things. And so um, demand drops, but it takes six to nine months or even longer for those increases in interest rates to impact the economy. And then one other point here, it could lead to a inverted yield curve. So for those of you who are not in finance, um, look up to the right here. And uh, this green line is the yield curve about a month ago. So you, if you had a three month bill, that is you bought it, a treasury bill and held it for three months, you would get less than 0.1% interest. If you had um, a five year or a 10 year, the interest rates go up for the 10 year, it was around 2%. So um, that's typical because if you're holding a bond for a longer period of time, there's more risk and you would expect to get paid more in interest. But now let's go to where it is right now. So right now, because the Federal Reserve has been increasing interest rates, uh, the three-month bill, you're earning 4.5%. But then look at this unusual um, happening here. As we get down to the 10-year, you're only getting 3.5%. So this is what we call an inverted yield curve. And this is important because historically, whenever we've seen an inverted yield curve, we've ended up in a recession uh, about one year later. So at this point, we expect a mild recession, and we expect it to happen in the second half of this year. Um, we expect that uh, GDP, the broadest indicator of economic activity, um, GDP growth will be less than potential, so less than 2% for the next two years, and the unemployment rate, we expect to increase to about 5%. So with that, Kelsey, I wonder, um, can you help the job seekers um, understand what it felt like last time we had about a 5% unemployment rate? Yeah, definitely. So I looked at sort of post pandemic and the rebound, if you will, we hit 5% in about August of, of 2021. And, you know, that was an interesting phenomenon in the hiring world when hiring was off the charts and was kind of a quick blip before it fell even further. But pre pandemic was more end of 2015, I think October, 2015. Um, and, Really, that that makes it feel to me like sometimes people used to talk about 5% being full employment, but Chris educated me and we've learned together that really 4% is kind of a healthy number, but 5% is not, you know, 10 and 12. So it's not quite as as scary as we might think when we hear the unemployment rate is is increasing. We 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 can we can handle that 5% as far as the job seeker goes. Great. Yeah. Thanks for um, giving us that color around that. Um, but even we are seeing some slowness in the economy. Um, job ads are something that we collect in our jobs EQ software. So we look at all the ads, spider it on a daily basis, deduplicate it. And here you're looking at the number of job ads in the United States in blue and in gray is the number of ads from last year. Um, job ads are down 14% since June 27th. Um, that's important because um, it's a leading indicator of employment because you don't um, put out an ad, advertise it for an ad, unless you think you're going to hire someone. So again, an indicator here that um, the economy is starting to slow. Um, we talked a little bit about wages. And if you look at the 2013, 2016 period, wages were running about 2% from a year ago. And that's consistent with what we saw in inflation. As we got toward the end of the 2018, 2019 period where the economy was very strong, wages started to pick up some because again, it was harder to hire people. Then we go through the COVID incident. And now we're looking at wages climbing around 4% a little more than 4% on a year over year um, basis. So what does that mean for you as a job seeker? Um, we are seeing 
uh, slowing. So you may be losing some of your negotiating power. And if you've been out of the market for a while, um, it's good to benchmark your expectations with the LHH salary guide to see what um, people are getting paid for the skills that you have. Uh, another side that the job market is easing, um, fewer workers are quitting. So here, these data only go back to about 2000. Gray shaded areas are recessions. And notice when times are uncertain, people don't quit their jobs as much. That's because they're afraid if they quit uh, and take another job with a, a different firm, that firm may not um, do as well. They don't know the business. Um, so during times of uncertainty, uh, we don't see quits happening as much. When we came out of the COVID um, recession, quits went up to the highest level that we had seen on record. But notice they have begun to slow again, which again is a sign that um, uh, job seekers are starting to feel a little uncertainty about what might be happening in the economy um, over the rest of this year. Um, but the funny thing is, or the strange thing is that layoffs have have not increased. So um, people getting laid off from their job, um, we're seeing it still pretty low, even though we've been hearing a lot of the tech companies laying off workers. I think it was yesterday that Dell said they're going to lay off about 6,600 workers. So um, the implication there, we're thinking that maybe some of these workers are getting severance at long periods of time of severance, and you can't apply for unemployment insurance until your severance runs out. So the implication for you as a job seeker there is if you do have severance, you have that financial support, you can wait longer um, to get the right job. I'm wondering, Kelsey, what do you think about that hypothesis? Yeah, yeah. And one thing I'll add with, we talked about LHH being, you know, an end-to-end -end talent solutions brand. We have a division of our group called Career Transition and Mobility. And this is an excellent resource for employers and candidates if you find yourself facing some similar organizational shifts that could be of assistance. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, one last slide before I pass this over to um, Patrick. And here we're looking at the unemployment rate in every county uh, in the United States um, back a couple of months, November 2022. The dark blue areas are showing the highest unemployment rate. And notice that in the center of the country, um, the unemployment rates are very low. But out in the West, especially here where we see some of the high tech firms that have been announcing layoffs, you see a higher unemployment rate. And then also in some of the metropolitan areas. So um, clearly the conditions vary greatly across the nation and Patrick will show you uh, how they vary across some industries. So Patrick. Thanks, Chris. Uh, a quick preview of where we're going. We're going to dig a lot deeper into some of those uh, job ad trends that Chris was looking at a high level because there's a lot of interesting stuff that comes up when we can break it into uh, some greater detail. And uh, we're certainly seeing some early indicators of uh, what we might be able to expect in a recession. We're starting to see some of that job ad volume trending down, um, but of course, some variation by industry and occupation. Uh, we've also noticed that employers tend to relax uh, credentials and education requirements and that they request in ads um, during particularly tight markets to help increase the supply of potential candidates. And we're starting to see the reverse in some instances of some of those education requirements creeping back in. Uh, we want to put some data behind some of the remote and hybrid job availability, um, get so, some numbers on what's actually being offered in ads and, and maybe uh, potentially a bit of a reality check on some of the hype that we're hearing about uh, remote work. That it's certainly increased over the pandemic um, and, and is an option for, for many jobs, but um, in a lot of times makes up just a small share of the overall jobs. Uh, and as Chris has touched on, uh, so far, the very tight labor market of recent years has meant that candidates have really enjoyed heightened negotiating power. Um, and as we are potentially on that cusp of an employer's market um, shift, we're starting to see some of those signs of slowing competition for things like salaries and, and sign-on bonuses. 
and some of these ads. Get into it with another look at that job volume. Overall in 2022, the number of job ads posted online was up over 5% uh, compared to 2021, but really peaked in that second quarter of 2022 and has been decreasing since. Part of that is um, likely a seasonal shift. You can see in previous years, the Q3 and Q4 has generally been a little bit, a little bit lower than um, the first half of the year for posting jobs online, um, but still representing a early sign of slowdown in, in hiring in overall volume. But um, we need to look at a couple other indicators too to, to kind of verify that trend. And one thing in particular that we look at is the amount of time that ads are staying online or the uh, median duration in days. You can see in, in 2019 and 2020, it was about 30, 31 days. Uh, in 2021, it got up to over 40 days that ads are staying on a good 10 days longer on average. Um, but that has dropped off in 2022, back to about just low 30s. Um, so we're seeing that those were certainly tight markets um, in years in 2019 and 2020. Um, so returning to uh, slower duration or uh, uh, less time online can um, it is indicating some easier filling easier time filling some of these jobs um, for employers than in 2021, but still some indication of um, a tighter market, uh, but some loosening of uh, bargaining power potentially for job seekers as employers are able to fill jobs faster. Um, Kelsey, does that match kind of what you're seeing on um, duration to place candidates? Yeah, I think this is such an interesting drop from 2021 to 2022 here. And, you know, some of our clients that we work with may argue that it was even harder in 2022 or the same as, as 2021 to fill, to find candidates and get their jobs filled. And something that we are constantly talk to our clients about over the past 18 months to 24 months is compacting their hiring process or shortening their hiring process. And they have learned you get the top talent by having an efficient, effective hiring process, not a five, six, seven step interview process just because you've always done that. Our clients really felt this and we're losing some top talent during these really tight job markets over the past few years and have learned that their traditional ways of hiring and onboarding weren't really working. They were losing out on some top talent. So they streamlined their hiring process and cut back areas where they could so that they weren't losing this top talent, of course. So I think that may be a factor in this in this significant change, of course, kind of level setting, but it, it set, seemed like a big jump to me. And it just made me think of those discussions we continue to have with our clients and how many of them really have made changes to their hiring process to get people in quicker so that they're not losing them to, you know, competing competing interview processes, really. So I think that's really interesting. Definitely. Yeah, that's a great insight. Uh, as employers change some of their processes to react to the, the different market conditions. Um, I expect we could see possibly some additional changes. Recessions tend to change things in uh, unpredictable ways. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if those practices um, continue to be streamlined or um, maybe relax a little bit more um, with a, a greater supply of potential candidates. Um, digging into some of the trends by occupations, um, we collected the overall jobs into blue collar, white collar and service sector jobs. And uh, knowing a, a lot of the job seekers on the uh, webinar today are, are likely in this white collar area. I want to focus on that in particular in gray. You can see the, um, the ads here are indexed to 100. So when it falls to 90 or below, that's about a 10% plus uh, decline in overall ads for white collar jobs. Uh, recovered to uh, about 5% up in, in 2021 and has continued rising in new job ads. Um, so even as we've seen some of the um, decline in volume in some areas like blue collar or a flattening in service sector jobs, um, still see continued demand and, and growth in demand for white collar ads. 
And I think we can expect to see that um, continue going forward into this year. Bringing that further into some occupation groups, um, I want to start with some of the declines in new job ad growth uh, from 2021 to 2022, because a lot of these are what you might expect to see declines um, in a recessionary or league up in a recessionary environment as people cut back on spending, like uh, going out to eat and food preparation, serving related occupations, uh, cut back on services, uh, haircuts or uh, other personal care and, and services. Um, maybe uh, buying, uh, cutting back on some of the sales um, and production of, of goods and, and moving it around places. But at the top here, um, we talked about some of the growth in white collar occupation ads. Uh, and again, a lot of the market areas that um, LHH works with, seeing a lot of growth in architecture and engineering ads, for example, um, management, business, uh, you'll find IT in this computer and mathematical occupation setting. Um, Kelsey, does that kind of match what you're seeing? Most definitely, Patrick. Like you said, IT and engineering has been a huge area of demand from our clients over the past you know, two years. And it's, it's definitely reflected here in the data. I would say business and financial operations sort of accounting under that umbrella is a really large portion of our business specifically. And we saw the demand really to match this 13 percent increase. I think it was like a record year in the last year as far as what we did in that space. So, yeah, this definitely maps with what we were seeing. Excellent. Good to always good to confirm that with on the ground knowledge. Um, in terms of looking ahead at a, a potential recession, um, I can talk about some of the areas that we might expect to decline. Um, and production is, is uh, tied to the manufacturing industry, which definitely tends to drop off in uh, recessions. But we are within some areas of manufacturing, um, still seeing a lot of interest and in, in opportunity in um, semiconductor activity. Uh, there's a federal CHIPS Act that's aiming to grow the domestic supply of semiconductors um, and, and bolstering growth in that area, and also in um, reshoring of pharmaceutical manufacturing. The pandemic really highlighted uh, the need for a domestic supply of uh, pharmaceuticals, and uh, we're seeing a lot of growth in, in that area as well. Um, We'd also historically see healthcare um, and, and related thing, uh, occupations like even um, administrative jobs uh, within healthcare or uh, professional services. Uh, healthcare industry has typically tended to uh, decline less or, or even continue to grow during downturns, um, largely because of the demographics uh, driving a lot. Uh, we talked about some of the um, requirements mentioned in, in ads, and one good way to measure this and look at this is how many ads are look are requiring a four-year degree or more, a bachelor's degree or higher. Um, we track this over time, and uh, prior to 2020, it was pretty consistently around 43%, a little bit of ups and downs uh, in employers looking for um, a four-year degree or more that um, really declined as the labor market continued to get tighter and, and candidate supply dried up. Uh, employers dropped to closer to 41% um, of ads mentioning a four-year degree. Uh, it has continued to rise a little bit um, over time, but really a, a signal that uh, of, of loosening some of those requirements um, and in looking to increase that potential supply. Um, so we are, have seen it uh, generally rising a, a little bit and it varies by occupation as well. So we took a look at just a couple examples here. Um, you can see in areas like uh, accounting and finance or healthcare practitioners, uh, it's somewhat continued to decline in the percentage of ads that typically require a bachelor's degree or more. 
Um, these are through December 2022. And continue to see a, a bit of a drop off. But in other areas like office and administrative support jobs or IT and engineering, we are starting to see an uptick, um, a, a trend of increasing requirements on, on some of these jobs, um, signaling uh, a little bit more flexibility on the part of employers and, and searching for candidates. Um, I, this could be a, a good opportunity for you as a, a job seeker to look at um, upskilling and, and what are the, uh, maybe not uh, going back to a, a full uh, bachelor's degree, but um, as, as employers are tightening some of those restrictions uh, and, and requirements for jobs, um, are there some additional skills that you can add that can help your resume stand out um, as the uh, candidate market uh, becomes a little bit more competitive for employers. Um, Kelsey, um, would, are you seeing anything uh, on, on here that resonates? Absolutely. I think we really experienced this over the last two years. It was we would talk to clients and they would have a list of five things. And by the end of the discussion, they were in agreement that they maybe might get one of those things and that was OK. <laughs> so we definitely had ease of requirements to try and expand the candidate pool. And over the past few years, upskilling and reskilling has been a huge topic of discussion. And I think that's going to get even hotter, so to speak, in the coming months and, and years as we go forward in this, into this potential recession. And the notion of upskilling and reskilling is, is critical from a candidate and a, and a client standpoint, but this will eventually shift back as we know, right? They're going to get, there are more people, they will be a little bit more picky and possibly as soon as later this year, as we heard from Chris a little bit earlier. So many firms like ours offer upskilling and reskilling opportunities while you're working with us. So like you mentioned, Patrick, you don't have to go back to school and get your degree necessarily and go back full time, but you can partake in these programs that will allow you to continue working and add some desirable skills to your repertoire You know, at that same time. And this will continue to be really a vital part of development in, in 2023 and beyond, for sure. Great context. Thank you. Um, another area of interest uh, is certainly in remote work. Um, we saw a definite increase over the pandemic, of course, as um, social distancing took place and, and employers and workers realize how much of their jobs could be done uh, remotely. Um, this chart shows remote work specifically called out in new job ads, and it's as a percentage of all ads. Um, so this pretty low percentage, about six and a half, six percent of all ads is including a lot of work like um, you know, that has to be done in person, uh, you know, have to be on the construction site to to complete that work or in the um, healthcare facility to treat someone. But um, still a, a bit of a check on some of the um, kind of anecdotal stories that we might be hearing about remote work. Um, and even if we take a look at some of the jobs that uh, have the highest percentage of ads that mention remote work, um, Kind of surprised I didn't even know this was officially an occupation to see blockchain engineers pulled out on the top here uh, in with about 48% of ads, even for um, occupations that call for uh, or where a large percentage are able to work remote. Only about half of ads or a little bit less than half of ads are specifically mentioning it. Um, and uh, we'd expect that to that that kind of benefit of remote work to be dec decreasing in um, a recession. And again, as uh, it becomes a little bit easier for there's a little bit more negotiating power on the employer side. Um, so we look at, here at the the top twenty occupations um, with the highest percentages of remote ads. A lot of these typically require a uh, four-year degree, um, and in blue are a lot of the IT 
specific. Um, these are a lot easier to um, to work remotely, certainly. Um, but we got a, a wide range here in different areas. Um, when we look at some of the top skills in ads um, in this area, things like um, advertising and customer relationship management um, have really grown and, and continue to grow and uh, maintain a, a top um, rank in, top, in lists of in-demand skills um, at each, each time we take a look at this list. And also data analysis and statistics uh, are highly in demand uh, for any of these roles generally. Um, and are good bets as you're looking for areas to upskill potentially um, to, to help your resume stand out. Um, Kelsey, uh, does anything jump out to you on this list? Yes. Oh, remote work. <laughs> this is really such an interesting topic and stat for me. And it really is a very timely shift with our candidates and clients right now. You know, in our business, it really felt at one time that I bet north of 80% of our jobs were remote. It was really the only thing we were dealing with. And seeing this data showing us that even the most remote jobs are only, you know, 50% is really eye-opening for me. In 2023, we are truly facing this misconception every day as boots on the ground with our clients and candidates. There are a lot fewer fully remote jobs available again than, than there previously were, but our candidates still want and expect remote. That's, that's sort of news to them when we discuss this with them. And they have some negotiating power, certainly. It's, it's absolutely not gone, but the remote piece is becoming harder and harder to negotiate since it's no longer the norm. At one time, it was a pretty easy to negotiate because there was no really alternative, but now it is it is a very hard thing to overcome with a client and a candidate if they are not in alignment on this topic. So we're having these discussions with our candidates every day to kind of shift that expectation. Or if they must have remote, if that's a deal breaker for them, think about where we're tar targeting our job search. You know, look at these highlighted roles or areas that are more prevalent in the remote workspace. Our marketing practice and creative has a huge percentage of remote jobs still, but I, I also do um, healthcare and like non-clinical business. And a lot of that, of course, has to be in person. So it's really a, a dichotomy right now between our clients and candidates that we truly talk about every day. So this was some great data that I was happy to see from, from you all at Tremura because it really backs up the situation that we're talking about every day. Excellent, thanks. Um, yeah, we also wanna take a look at some of the wages as Chris mentioned. Wages are continuing to grow uh, at, at higher rates than uh, we've seen at, in keeping, trying to keep up with inflation um, somewhat, but that growth has slowed in, in recent months. Um, and in job ads, uh, we're seeing some of the areas where that growth has been concentrated in, in median wages offered. Um, is, really in some of those jobs that are in highest demand and um, some of the some of the growth in, in other occupations slowing down a little bit. Um, but this is a, a very recent look at just January and February 2023 versus the same time 2022. And um, we see uh, a lot of those um, the same types of skills in uh, analysis and um, IT coming up again and uh, managerial roles, um, computer and information systems, um, computer user support, uh, and um, sales, for example, here, continuing to see some of the growth. Um, Kelsey, does some of those roles resonate with you? Yes, I love this topic of wage growth and where we're seeing it. So we are seeing a huge growth in wage year over year, of course, like everyone else's, but specifically this management analyst title jumps out to me. So in all of our practice areas, analysts are in high demand, excuse me, high demand from our clients across the board, whether that's like an HR analyst, a supply chain analyst, a revenue cycle analyst, or more traditional financial analysts. Our clients across all of our practice area focuses need analyst skills on their teams. 
And when we speak to them about those skill sets and things they can't find, <laughs> this is always at the top of the list. So we talked a little bit about upskilling and reskilling earlier. This is an excellent skill to focus on if you're thinking about the job market or thinking about your future and adding to your resume. Many times candidates like fall into these roles within their organizations. We have a couple analysts on my team and they all truly just were doing other things and had you know a knack for analysis and Excel and those sorts of things and learned this on the job. So this is a, not a skill that is always out there for hiring managers to find, but if they see someone who has that and they can really jump on that, they absolutely will. So if you upskill yourself in this area and then you promote that in your job search, hiring managers will notice. So skills like you know data mining and analysis, interpreting results and making rec recommendations based upon that data, that's what it is. This is what companies are seeking and is going to be in high demand for the foreseeable future with whatever specialization you already have. So I think that's another way to think about it, Patrick, is you don't have to necessarily go learn some new amazing like thing or specialization, whatever you're smart about today, <laughs> just add that analysis and data to it. And then that's a really great skill set that you can market out for the future. You know, having that data is one thing for the company, having access to it. But having someone who can actually read it, understand it, draw conclusions and make those recommendations, this is what they really, really need. I could not take your raw data and make conclusions based upon it, but I could do that in my area of expertise. So these are the areas of skill that I think would be incredibly valuable to truly anyone, anyone thinking about the job search in the next couple of years. That's great. Great insight. And um, I, especially in thinking about opportunities in a uh, recession or long-term um, skills, things like uh, familiarity with data and analysis, and particularly in your field, uh, which is, may already be specialized, but being able to bring data and analysis to that has uh, long been in the forecast for growth and as expected to um, only continue in importance as data enters into ever new areas of, of work. Uh, finally, we, it, as a wage indicator and uh, negotiating power, we're seeing a decline in some of the sign up bonuses that are mentioned in ads. Uh, this isn't uh, necessarily a, a standard for any occupation. It, it tends to be in blue collar work and particularly it, for truck drivers um, are driving a lot of the growth of the blue line. But um, for white collar, work, we did see an uptick in sign-on bonuses from about 2% of ads to about 4% over 2021. And it's really flattened off there. Uh, and that's a, another indication here of that kind of shift in negotiating power and, uh, and wage expectations what, that uh, job seekers in, with a recession looming uh, might need to readjust some of their assessments of uh, what to expect in you know, a, a new role. Um, with that, we get to the conclusions. And Chris, do you want to take it from here? Sure. Thanks, Patrick. And thanks, uh, Kelsey. That's been a very interesting discussion that you've been having here. So in conclusion, no, we're not in a recession yet, but we expect one the second half of this year. We don't expect it to be a deep recession or we don't expect the unemployment rate to skyrocket. Um, and as you just heard Kelsey um, talking about, continue to add those credentials to bolster your resume. The analyst skills are consistently in demand. And Kelsey, as you were talking about it, it made me think um, adding analysis and data. Um, we really need a lot of storytellers out there to be able to analyze that data and communicate it in a way that um, people can act on it. Um, another conclusion, expect hiring practices to continue to change. Uh, less jobs, um, jobs are online fewer days, meaning that they're getting filled. Credential requirements are starting to increase for some occupations. So again, um, get some credentials to bolster your resume. And we're seeing that slowdown in salary growth and sign on bonuses. Uh, and then finally, uh, we probably need to adjust our expectations to find full-time uh, remote work. So with that, we have had Kevin Miller on the line with us this entire time, who is our director of marketing, and he has been keeping up with all the questions and will now um, pose a few 
in the remaining 15 minutes we have. Yes, thanks, Chris, um, and thanks everyone for the questions. I, we're going to have time for a couple of them, so we'll just kind of go in reverse order um, and ask a couple here. The, the first thing that I see, uh, we did have some folks ask how to get the LHH salary guide, um, and if you go to the chat, there are a couple of responses in there with links that can take you to the salary guide, and I believe um, a salary calculator was, was in there as well, so that information's in there that you can get. Um, so the next question, so probably Chris or Patrick, this is probably going to be for, for us at Chimura, um, had a specific question about related to the to the stat that the average time of postings are decreasing. Um, and the question was, do we do we see employers closing old postings and ads and reposting? Um, and what does it mean if the employer closes a job posting and then reposts it in the same website? I think that's a Patrick question, if, if he can answer it. Yeah, that's a, a good question. I, I know um, we probably have a couple of people on uh, the Chimura IT and, and data governance side listening in who, who might have a better answer. But from my understanding, um, a big problem in job postings um, analysis is uh, in defining duplicate job ads. Um, if it, the same job is posted on multiple websites, uh, we don't want to be double counting that. And if it's posted maybe uh, within a day or two, uh, is that on, on a different website uh, with very similar text, is that for the same job or is that for a slightly different job and a, a, just on a different site? Um, so we've got a complex series of rules for deduplicating ads. Um, I believe uh, it, it certainly depends on a lot of the unique situations, but I think in general, if an employer closes a, an old ad and reposts it immediately uh, with identical text, um, we would count that as a, a duplicate and continue the counting that as the duration. Great. Thanks, Patrick. Um, this, Kelsey, this is probably for you, um, considering the markets that you serve. Uh, the question is, could you speak to the healthcare industry as a whole? Um, we're seeing a much less interest in those who want to get training into this into this industry. Anything from dental, pharmacy, and allied health careers. Oh, it's a great question. I we do really focus on the non-clinical side, so I think maybe we're alluding to some of those clinical roles that I'm not quite as well versed in. <laughs> I will say the we have a nonprofit arm of our organization called the Adeco. Um, group U.S. Foundation, and we've done some upscaling programs within the healthcare space. And I would I would agree with you. It, it's sometimes harder to get people to get excited about those types of roles. But I think if we, you know, if you're, I'm not sure if you're meaning if we're trying to entice them over, so to speak, and we're wanting to bring them into the fold. You know, I think an upscaling discussion might be a good way to start because they can continue doing what they're already doing and layer that in, you know, for future versus maybe going cold turkey kind of thing. So I'm not sure if that completely answers your question. And I apologize, my clinical side isn't as robust, but I think that kind of dipping your toe in from an upscaling side can be a really good way to get people excited about it. Great, thanks. Um, Chris, probably for, for you, um, the question is about um, kind of probably quickly just go over what are, why are the reasons why we're projecting recession. Um, question here is, mainly referring to Moody, Moody's um, revising their forecast to not include a recession in 23. Right. Um, Moody's, um, I found um, historically to be optimistic. Um, so why we're expecting a recession, again, we're not expecting it until the end of this year or the third and fourth quarter um, because the Fed has raised interest rates so quickly. Uh, we've not seen them increase interest rates this quickly for since the early 1980s. So uh, such a sharp rise is going to have an impact and has already started to have an impact on, um, for example, the housing industry is a great example. Some say that housing is already in a recession, construction that is. Um, but the main thing is the inverted yield curve and that impact in the economy about a year later. We're seeing, like we showed in the presentation, some signs of it in the slowing um, job posts. Um, we're also seeing, um, uh, although employment is growing pretty well, we're seeing some of the indicators of recession, such as industrial production is starting to slow down. 
uh, business investment is starting to slow, and that's a sign of um, uh, confidence, uh, lack of confidence of businesses in the future. And and we've seen quite a few layoff uh, announcements over the past five and six months from the IT area, uh, now starting to spread over into other areas, such as I mentioned Dell and um, some other areas like uh, auto manufacturing. Great, thanks, Chris. Um, Kelsey, this one's for you. Um, so the question is, with fewer young males, um, kind of 18, 24 age groups um, staying in, in college, what advice might you have for them? Is it to look for certifications or different or different routes to training or kind of what advice might you have for folks like that? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head, right? Certifications and specialization that you can find that's not a degree is, is certainly valuable in the job market today. Um, somebody mentioned a lot of IT looks for certification versus degree sometimes. And, you know, we found that to be true as well. So, yes, I think you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> I'll just quickly add on on that. Um, we typically see enrollment in colleges, especially in um, two year colleges, uh, coincide with the job market. When it's easier to find a job without a degree, um, there's less perceived need for that credential or um, education. And as it becomes harder and uh, you need to stand out more, uh, that college can be uh, a way to ride out some of the worst parts of the uh, downturn and also make sure that you get uh, a credential to help transition you into that job. Um, so we're seeing fewer um, attending, fewer students during the, uh, in the current environment in a recessionary environment that might see a uh, return to school. Kevin, I see a question that I'd, I'd like to answer here from Patrick. Um, are we seeing an environment where blue collar workers are in high demand, higher demand than white collar? In my manufacturing heavy community, the attitudes have shifted from it's hard to find to I cannot lay off the, my production line. So um, it actually depends on what, go, drilling down deeper into the occupations within blue collar versus white collar. But the one thing that we have seen over the past couple of years is that wages for blue collar workers have been rising at a faster rate than those for white collar um, in general, especially those that are the um, lower paid. Um, and then also uh, the comment about manufacturers are now s saying um, that I can't afford to lay off my production line. And that's something that we often see going into a recession um, where, um, and, I'll, and also on the other hand, when there's a tight labor market too, but you don't want to lay off your workers for fear that if you lay them off, then they may go work for someone else. And then when the recession's over, um, you don't have the workforce to start getting back up to a stronger pace. So some, some manufacturers and um, firms in general are slow to lay off people because they expect activity to pick up and they want those same skilled workers to be with them when it does. Okay, I'm not hearing Kevin, so I'm thinking that maybe something happened with his sound. Um, someone did ask, will the slide deck be available after the webinar? And yes, it will, as well as the um, uh, the sound so that you can listen to it. Uh, how long do we expect the recession to last? At this point, we're only looking at um, two quarters, the second and third quarter the third and fourth quarter. But again, that's gonna depend on if inflation is stubborn and doesn't come down, is it sitting around 5%, then we would expect the Fed to raise interest rates even more. If they raise interest rates, um, say around five, to get to five and a half, six percent 6%, then I would expect it would be a much uh, worse recession. If that does happen, there are some people who believe that we're gonna be in an economy where the unemployment rate is 6.5%. Uh, for two years, but even so, that 6.5% uh, 
is um, still not as bad as what we saw uh, during the COVID recession. Yeah, thanks, um, Chris. Um, I, well, one other question that I'm seeing um, that it, I think it's marked private. Um, this is probably for Kelsey. Do you have any recommendations on how this information should shape negotiating an offer for, for job seekers? Oh, great question. I think you still go in strong and you still try, but I think you manage your own expectations where 18 months ago you could probably expect to get almost everything you wanted. Now that may not be the case. So if I was coming in and I was doing this, I would say, okay, here are my three things I'm asking for. If I get one, I'm happy. Whereas at sometimes you would get, you know, zero and you're just so excited to get an offer. <laughs> you definitely still have negotiating power. I would encourage you to do so, but mentally be prepared. Okay, what is my have to have? What is my medium? And what is just um, pie in the sky kind of thing, right? So I would just advise to manage your own expectations. Great. And we probably have time for one more because we're coming up on time. So this is one that just came in that's actually really good. Um, what is the employer's opinion on the growth of empl employees graduating from boot camps to transition to the tech and web design industry? I'm thinking that's a Kelsey question. Um, I'm not sure I have an educated answer for you on that, but if we can find this person's name, I'm happy to consult with our IT gurus and get their take on it. Um, our larger group has a completely separate IT arm as well that has a very formal boot camp speaking to exactly what you're talking about. I just don't know the conversion rate. So if, if we're able to get the information, I will absolutely follow up on that. <laughs> Sounds good. So I think we're just at about time. So it probably makes sense to just close it out here. And Chris, did you have anything to say as we close? All right. So thank you all for, for joining us today. Like we said, I think these the slides and recording should be available. It will be put up on uh, Chamura's YouTube page here the next day or two. So um, thank you all for joining and, and take care.